During reentry, the maximum dynamic pressure encountered by a projectile called max Q is one half of the air density multiplied by the square of the velocity. Calculating max Q for speeds of 3.5 and 4.0 kilometers per second, we can see that the aerodynamic forces are smaller than the compressive strength of glacier ice, which can be 15 megapascals. This means that the ice boulders could have survived reentry through the atmosphere without breaking up. Some weak ice boulders with a compressive strength of three megapascals could have fragmented at an altitude of five kilometers above the surface during reentry, but at a speed of 3.5 kilometers per second, the pieces would have hit the ground 1.4 seconds after the fragmentation. Ice projectiles re-entering the atmosphere at three to four kilometers per second and at an angle of 35 degrees would have spent 43 to 58 seconds traversing the atmosphere. In 2019, I conducted an experiment to determine how much ice would melt during one minute at the re-entry temperature typical of the space shuttle, which is slightly lower than the 1,995 degrees Celsius produced by a propane torch. Blasting an ice chunk for one minute with a propane torch only melted 10% of the ice. This amount of ablation would have left enough ice to impact the Earth and create Carolina Bays. We can be sure that the secondary impacts that formed the Carolina Bays were made by solid ice and not slush balls, watery snow, or any kind of slurry. Below the triple point of water, which is at six thousandths of an atmosphere, water can only exist as a solid or a gas. Any liquid water that was ejected by the extraterrestrial impact or by piggybacking on an ice chunk quickly turned into ice crystals. Any wet ice boulders would have left a trail of ice crystals during their trajectories in the vacuum of space. The glacier ice impact hypothesis uses the laws of physics as the mathematical foundation for calculating the characteristics of the impact basins and the extraterrestrial impact. The conic sections representing the Carolina base and the convergence point by the Great Lakes provide the initial conditions for the basic phase, uh, base model. The ballistic equations provide the velocities of the ice projectiles. Yield loss correlating impact energy with greater size can be used to calculate the size of the projectiles. These calculations provide information about the extraterrestrial impact. Ellipses are conic sections, and this implies that the Carolina Bays and the Nebraska Basins originated as inclined conical cavities or penetration funnels. The impact of a projectile displaces material and forms uplifted rims around the cavity. Experimental oblique impacts by ice projectiles produce inclined conical cavities that look elliptical when viewed from above. In 2022, I coded a Python program to fit ellipses to the Carolina Bays by the least squares method. Points are selected along the perimeter of a Carolina Bay, and the coordinates of the perimeter are processed by the program to graph an ellipse and calculate the azimuth of the bay. This program is open source software available for everyone. The Python program can process points from Google Earth geographical coordinates or from a digitized image. Geographical coordinates are converted to meters, taking into consideration that the distance between degrees of longitude change depend on the latitude. The Carolina Bays are elliptical and the ellipses are conic sections. So where do the cones come from? The cones come from the shock waves. A projectile moving through a viscous medium creates a conical shock wave as long as the frictional forces do not exceed the yield strength of the projectile. The shock wave displaces, uh, dis uh, dissipates quickly in a medium of low viscosity such as air or water. An elastic medium like ballistic gel uh, reverts to its original form and retains the tubular path of the projectile, but not the conical shape. A viscous non-elastic medium like modeling clay retains the shape of the conical shock wave, although the shape may change slowly under the influence of gravity. <laughs>